Good morning. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the peace and the love of Jesus Christ be with you always. As we gather this morning, we're challenged to forgive as we have been forgiven. So let us contemplate our own faults and our own failings, and let us ask God to be merciful with us. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out the lost and forsaken. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to heal the contrite. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, you bid us to to go forth and to forgive as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. May the life. Let us pray. O God, strengthen strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. For we ask this through Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth the Jerusalite has a vineyard in Jezreel, next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria, Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard to be my vegetable garden, since it is close by next to my house. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will give you its value in money. Naboth answered him, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral heritage. Ahab went at home disturbed and angry at the answer. Naboth, the Jerusalite, had made to him. I will not give you my ancestral heritage. Lying down on his bed, he turned away from food and would not eat. His wife, Jeroboam, came to him and said to him, Why are you so angry that you would not eat? He answered her, Because I spoke to Naboth, the Jerusalem, and said to him, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you a vineyard in exchange. But he refused to let me have his vineyard. His wife, Jeroboam, said to him, A fine ruler over Israel you are indeed. Get up, eat, and be cheerful. I will obtain the vineyard of Naboth, the Jerusalite, for you. So so she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and having sealed them with his seal, sent them to the elders and to the nobles, who live in the same city with Naboth. This is what she wrote in the letter. Proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people. Next, get two scoundrels to face him and accuse him of having cursed God and king. Then take him out and stone him to death. His fellow citizens, the elders and the nobles who dwelt in the city, did as Gerald Bell has ordered them in writing to the letters she has sent them. They proclaim a fast and place Naboth at the head of the people. Two scoundrels came in and confront him with the accusation. Naboth has cursed God and king, and they led him out of the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent the information to Jezebel that Naboth had been stoned to death. When Jezebel learned that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, go on, take, take possession of the vineyard Naboth the Jerusalite, that he refused to sell you, because Naboth is not alive but dead. On hearing that Naboth was dead, Ahab started off on his way down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jerusalite to take possession of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, listen to my groaning. Listen to my 
Hearken to my words, O Lord, and tend to my signing. Heed my call for help, my King and my God. Lord, listen to me. I dawn, I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lord, listen to my groaning. You hate all evil doors. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhorrents. Lord, listen to my The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 42. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn and offer the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand them your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with them for two. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear these sayings all the time. We've grown up with them. Embroider them into little banners, put them on a poster. But the those who heard Jesus for the first time, um, even though these things have a basis in the Old Testament, they were still radical ideas. They're still radical because we don't think about things like loving our enemies as something that we actually do. In fact, our whole system, our whole world seems to be based on the enemy. Certainly our military, that's how they keep their funding by pointing out the great evils in the world that they have to protect us from. When the Soviet Union fell, which had done such a great job for them, they had to rush quickly to find another enemy to protect us from, and so eyes turned to the Middle East. Corporations battle themselves. Politicians, you know, they always, of course, that's their main speech is, I'm going to protect you from what this person is going to, you know, this terrible thing that this other person is going to do for, to you. It's all about protecting us from someone, something, somewhere, somehow. Jesus tells us to love our enemies, to not resist our enemies. That is a, certainly a tall order, but how do we live this gospel? Do we just skip over it and ignore it? Or do we embrace it and struggle with trying to live um, a life that is peaceful and that one that sees everyone in the world as a child of God? Um, the church um, has tried to... Um, in recent years, teach more social justice. I think, you know, it's in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they had written some wonderful documents on social justice, and some of those kind of got um, put on a shelf until Vatican II, and then, you know, for about 10 years or so, everybody was wound up about this again, and then, you know, we kind of, kind of fades away, and then, oh, those people with, you know, 
I've actually had a redemptorist ask me. When I was um, a student, I was actually put in charge of our social justice commission. And one of my fellow redemptorists asked me, what in the world does social justice have to do with us? We're redemptorists. What does all that justice stuff got to do with us anyway? And I just wept. Some say, talking about racism, oh, that's politics. Or talking about immigration, that's, you know, politics or someone else's problem. But these are all things that the church teaches us about, about justice, because this is what Jesus taught to us. When um, Bishop Carlson began writing on immigration, he um, he had three justice issues that he wrote on. Death penalty, racism, and immigration. And immigration was the one he said he got the most kickback from. Um, a letter he showed me was from a man who had been Catholic all his life, and he said, if this is what the church is teaching, then I'm leaving. I quit. But it isn't what the church teaches, it's what our Lord teaches us to look at the entire gospel, to not pick and choose. To love as our Lord would have us love is the command that we must strive to live up to. So let us offer our prayers to our God. Let us pray that we can indeed embrace the gospel, that we can love one another, even those who persecute us, we pray. We pray for justice in the world, for all of those who suffer injustice, for those who seek an honest day's wage, for an honest day's work, for those who seek safety for their children, a decent place to live, respect, and equal treatment under the law. We pray. We pray for the sick and the suffering, for all of those who are ill, for all of those on our parish prayer list, members of our families, friends, for all of those who seek healing in body, mind, and in soul, we pray. We pray for our world at this time as we continue to grapple with this pandemic, that we do so with wisdom, that we listen to the experts, that we don't become um, too quick to re let our guard down. For those who are ill and for those who've lost loved ones, we pray. And let us pray for the dead and the dying for all of those who've gone before us in faith, especially for Jim and Jackie and Marjorie and for those um, and for the living and the deceased members of the Holmes and Weatherhead families, we pray. Almighty God, we surrender these prayers voiced as well as the silent prayers of our hearts into your loving care as we ask all these things through the intercession of our Mother Perpetual Help and in the name of Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. It is through your goodness that we have these gifts to offer. They are produce of the earth, fruit of the vine, work and toil of human hands. May they become for us our spiritual food and our spiritual drink.
pray, my sisters and my brothers, let us pray that these, our gifts, may now be found acceptable by our good and gracious God. O God, who in the offering presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures praise you and all the redeemed serve you and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels and saints as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. Passing it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine and once more, giving thanks and praise, passed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with David, our Bishop, your clergy, religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, we remember in a special way the deceased members of the Holmes and Weatherhead families and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Alphonsus, Servant of God, the Abomen, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so we pray as our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may all be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace. It is my peace that I give to you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant to her true peace and lasting unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you. Lamb of God, the sins of the world. mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who comes to take away the sin of the world. Blessed, joyful are all who come to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Just the regular announcement, if you leave your kneeler down where you're sitting, and if you want to help us with the cleaning, just come up here and um, have a blessed week. We also, um, the plan is, if you didn't hear it this um, weekend, to um, begin to open the office. We'll probably begin with just a couple hours a day and stuff, so maybe just stay tuned on, or we'll put that on the website and that if there's something you need. Um, Katie's back and is getting settled and stuff, and um, um, I think with the bulletin, um, we now send the bulletin in. Currently, we've got somebody else doing it, and they need it a day earlier, so it, anything for the bulletin needs to be in on Monday or Tuesday. Um, so just keep in touch as far as what's happening as usual, and have a blessed week, blessed day. May the peace of our Lord be with you all. And may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This Mass has ended. Let us go to love one another.